Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. I'm back from vacation, and you know what that means. Many of you have reached out saying you don't know what class to play, and there are so many options, you find it difficult to decide which one is perfect for your playthrough. This ranking will hopefully assist both new and old players with making a decision about which classes appeal to them. Before we dig in, let me give credit where credit is due. I am not the first content creator to take a crack at ranking all 199 classes. As far as I know, that distinction belongs to the Neo Seeker website, or more specifically, their content contributor, in effect. I have referenced their ranking several times over the past year and will leave a link for that list in the description. Please note it hasn't been updated since August. Some of our rankings will obviously be similar, but they provide one or two sentence explanations while I will walk through subclass mechanics and offer more detailed arguments. If you stop by their site, please be sure to leave a comment and let them know you appreciate the content. Alright, with that out the way, let's go through some notes before getting into the rankings. First, I am ranking these classes based on you taking them all the way to level 20, or in the case of prestige classes, all the way to 10. Some classes are great just as a dip to pick up specific features, but not something you want to take all the way, and that will count against them. When applicable, I will mention functionality a class has that makes it appealing even if it has a lower ranking. Second, we will not review basic class mechanics only what makes each subclass special. So if we are talking about the Tower Shield Specialist subclass, I will not review mechanics for the Fighter class, even though you need to understand them in order to understand that subclass. There's a link in the description for a video that walks through all 25 base classes and their mechanics, which you are welcome to reference. I will note if a subclass combines mechanics from two different base classes so you know where to look for more information. Third, we will rank these classes F through S. F means a class is completely irredeemable and there's not much to talk about. D means this class has a cool mechanic or two but overall is inferior to other options. C means this class is solid but what it can do is probably not going to blow you away. I'll also sometimes place classes here that are not bad, but there's just no reason you would use them. B means this is a great class, but the game is still going to be challenging while playing it, which honestly might be preferable for some of you. A means that not only is this a fantastic class, but it also makes the game significantly easier. S means that not only is this a phenomenal class, but if your build is right, it will let you steamroll through the competition, even on core. Of course, some rankings might fall outside of this due to my own personal biases, but for the most part, I intend to stick with this guideline. Fourth, I want to be completely transparent and say that I am not a min-maxer nor do I play this game on unfair difficulty. I also rarely, if ever, combine multiple classes as this usually conflicts with the character storyline I have in my head. Feedback from the community, and frankly, even other content creators who focus on these areas of the game is absolutely welcome. Feel free to post links in your channels below as long as it's paired with a comment that provides value to the overall discussion. Finally, let me just note that at the end of the day, pick what is fun for you. Most of the classes have at least one redeemable feature, and Mythic levels can help you do amazing things even with a subpar class. This series is just to provide information and hopefully spur on a fun dialogue. With all that being said, let's get started. First up is Alchemist. This class is great for clearing skill checks and buffing the party. Of special note is that Alchemist can cast buffs like Shield and Echo Location on other party members after taking the Infusion Discovery, which is something the majority of classes are unable to do. 
bombs are really fun to use and there are a lot of different ones to fit your playstyle. Once you are able to combine fast bombs and rapid shot, you can lob multiple bombs in a turn, which does a ton of damage. Bombs target enemies touch armor class, which makes it significantly easier to successfully attack even if you don't have a huge investment in dexterity. Personally, I rank this class a B. For some reason, Owlcat has not put any items into the game that help with bombs, even though there are multiple options of that type in Kingmaker. So while Kineticists get items that help blast, and Spellcasters can use metamagic feats, Alchemists don't have anything that specifically interacts with bombs. On top of this, Bombs are a very finite resource, so unlike some other classes with resource management, you can't really just let your character spam them. That means you have to switch up between using bombs and a regular ranged weapon, which you'll be decent with, but it's not the core focus of the class. Throwing 5 bombs in a turn is still going to obliterate 90% of the enemies you face, but you'll be able to do that a very limited number of times between rest. Now we'll move on to the Alchemist subclasses, starting with Kyrogen. This subclass loses saving throws against poison and immunity to poison, both of which are completely irrelevant due to Delay Poison Communal, which is available for multiple party members early in the game. In exchange, they gain Infuse Curative, which allows Infusion to be applied to several curative spells. This is also irrelevant, since the vast majority of people playing Alchemist will take Infusion early, giving all of their spells this functionality. They also gain Skill Focus Religion and Breath of Life as an extract. Neither of these are particularly compelling, but the subclass still maintains all the important mechanics from Alchemist, so I rank it a B. Honestly, there's no reason to pick this over Alchemist. The next subclass is Grenadier. It loses one rank of saving throws against poison and immunity to poison, both of which again are completely irrelevant. In return, you gain martial weapons proficiency, which gives you a few additional options regarding what ranged weapons to use. Alchemical weapon lets you infuse a weapon or ammunition with the effect of a harmful alchemical liquid. Translation: Those useless corrosive and fire flasks you've been carrying around can be consumed and used to power your standard attacks. Certainly not the kind of damage that will make or break your build, but it's a pretty cool option nonetheless. Precise Bomb ensures your bombs don't damage allies, which obviously is very important. This is available as a discovery for base alchemists, but I still think it's a significant pickup because there are a ton of great discoveries and you might not be able to get all the ones that you want, so getting a crucial one automatically is nice, even if it's not groundbreaking. Directed Blast allows you to use bombs in a 30-foot cone rather than throwing the bombs. This works with Precise Bomb, so you don't have to worry about the cone affecting allies. The real advantage of the cone is that all enemies will be hit with max damage if they fail the reflex save, as opposed to regular bombs where only the enemy who's directly hit receives max damage and the rest experience splash damage which is significantly lower. When you first get this at level 6, it's great and it will hit like a Mack truck. Once you can combine fast bombs with rapid shot, Throwing multiple bombs in a turn becomes significantly more powerful than using directed blasts, making this ability pretty much useless long term. Finally, this subclass gets Staggering Blast, which allows you to stagger enemies if they fail a fortitude save after you critically hit them. I don't see this information directly listed in the game, but I believe you need to roll a 20 to critically hit, 19 after taking improved critical. Therefore, while this can be a nice debuff, unless you are taking Trickster and significantly increasing how often your bombs critically hit, I don't think it's really a game changer. Bottom line, this class is clearly an upgrade over Alchemist, so I give it a B+, but I cannot rank it any higher since it doesn't address any of the issues Alchemist has. As a side note, this was my favorite class in Kingmaker, so I was really excited to use it in Wrath of the Righteous and I had a great time playing with it.
Next up is Instant Synthesizer. You lose five rankings of bomb damage, which is obviously a massive sacrifice. You also lose access to Mutagen, which is irrelevant because more than likely you are going to be using Cognitogen anyway. You also lose Persistent Mutagen, which is only annoying because Mutagen lasts for 10 minutes per level anyway. In exchange, you get to use Incense Fogs that will buff your allies or debuff enemies. The advantage of this is the fog will use an alchemical bonus or penalty which are extremely rare and almost certainly stack with what your party members already have. Overall, I give this class a C because I don't see why anyone would use it. None of your party members smoothly slide into this role, so more than likely you would have to roll this yourself or create a buffing merc that uses it. There are multiple better options for classes that buff your party, so while this isn't terrible, I just don't think it serves any real purpose. Coming up next is Metamorph. To take this class, you completely lose access to bombs and the throw anything feat. In exchange, you gain stealth as a class skill and adaptive physiology, which by level 18, provides a 75% chance to ignore critical hits and precision damage. This closely mirrors the effects you can get from three ranks of the preserved organs discovery, which negates sneak attacks as opposed to precision damage. Obviously, this class is meant to be upfront and personal, so this is a pretty nice addition to the kit. You also get Super Changer, which, as you level up, will allow you to use Beast Shape level 1 through 4, and then you will get Dragon Kind 1 and 2. Overall, I rate this class a C. At first glance, you might think it's a combination of Alchemist and Druid, but it's not, because Super Changer is not treated the same as Wild Shape. You are not able to use spells when in animal form, but unlike druids, you do not have the option to take the natural spell feat to return that functionality. To me, that's a pretty big knock. On a lesser note, this also means the master shapeshifter mythic ability doesn't allow you to shapeshift for an unlimited number of rounds. Bottom line, I just don't see any reason to take this over a straight up druid or other polymorph options available to you. Next on the list is Preservationist. You lose all poison saving throws and poison immunity, which again doesn't matter. You also lose persistent mutagen, which again is just annoying and not deeply impactful. You also lose one rank of discovery, which is probably the biggest sacrifice here, but still not a crazy big deal, especially since you lose it late in the game. In exchange for all of this, you gain multiple ranks of Bottle Ally, which adds summoning spells into your spellbook. I get this class a B+. It maintains most of what makes Alchemist awesome while adding some additional functionality. Keep in mind that unlike most RPGs, I don't think summoning in Wrath of the Righteous is really all that great. Most of the time summons are fodder, even when you have high level versions. If your mythic path is Aeon, this class becomes more viable due to the wide selection of effective team wide buffs you can place on your summons. Otherwise, don't expect the summons to turn the tide of a difficult battle. It's worth noting that thematically, this class provides the best way I have ever seen to mimic Ash from the Pokemon series, a preservationist trickster run where you are really playing a game of Pokemon Go and it just so happens demons are in your way so you deal with them sounds absolutely fantastic. Quick note before we rank Vivisectionist, if you enjoy this video, I would really appreciate you hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my video spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. Last on the list is Vivisectionist. This class completely loses the ability to throw bombs or select discoveries. In exchange, you'll gain a full 10 ranks of sneak attack damage. You'll also gain 10 opportunities to choose a medical discovery, which is a reduced list of discoveries and rogue talents combined together. So while you will still be able to pick up options like Greater Mutagen, you will also have options like Weakening Wound or Dispelling Attack. At 10th level, you will gain access to an expanded list of rogue talents in your medical discoveries list. 
I give this class an A. It's fantastic as a one level dip to pick up mutagen. It's also great to multi-class with other classes that make use of sneak attack like slayers or rogues. It's a solid option to take all the way to level 20 as well. One knock I do have against this class is that thematically it only makes sense for an evil run through. Read in the description, it's readily apparent that you don't like dissecting bodies to figure out how to heal people. Other than that, it's a fantastic option that will almost certainly help your team. That wraps up my rankings for Alchemist and all of its archetypes. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.